What are the symptoms of bad software? How do you know you have bad code? What does it do to you? Other than the obvious thing of slowing you down. How does it slow you down? If you modify something and that breaks something else, the code is bad. Um, so one of the symptoms is called rigidity. Rigidity is when you touch the code and um, you must now modify massive amounts of other code to come back into consistency with this modification you made. Your boss comes to you one day and says, can you fix this bug? And you look at the bug report and you say, oh, I know exactly where this bug is. You don't tell your boss that. You just think to yourself, I know exactly where this bug is. I actually put it in the code yesterday. You go to the module because you know where this bug is. You go to the module, it's up on your screen. You look at it for a minute and say, yep, there's the bug. I know how to fix it. Well, wait a minute. If I do that, there's this other module over here that calls that function. I better go check it. You bring that module up. And you, oh, man. I'm going to have to fiddle with that a little bit. It's changed a little bit. Oh, wait. If I make that change, there's these modules over here. And now you begin to chase the tail through the code. And the weeks go by. Two weeks, three weeks, four or five. Your boss comes back in and says, I thought you were going to be done with this in three weeks. I'll be done tomorrow, I swear. By the time you're done, you have touched every module in the system. Your boss says, what the heck took so long? And you utter the immortal words of every software developer. Oh, it was a lot more complicated than I thought. That is rigid code. Code that has dependencies that snake out in so many directions that you cannot make an isolated change without changing everything else around it. Bad dependencies. Systems that are coupled. Another uh, symptom of bad code, similar to that one, is called fragility. Fragility is the tendency of the code to break in many places, even when you only change it in one place. You make one very simple change, and a whole bunch of other things break. But they break in parts of the code that have no relationship to what you changed. You made a little change here, and something over there doesn't work anymore. You make a change to the way um, the salary for hourly employees is calculated. Just a little change. Doop, 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 doop. Made a little change. And now it won't print the report for the union boss. It crashes when it prints that report. Why'd that happen? This is fragile code. Fragile code breaks in bizarre and strange ways. Ways that you cannot predict. You make a change over here, something over there breaks. You, you didn't predict it. You don't know why it happened. You have to chase the bug around. Finally, you realize, oh, yeah, that function over there set a flag, and that guy over there used that flag, and uh. Your car has an electric window that doesn't work. You take it to a mechanic. Mechanic looks at it for a while and says, yeah, I can fix that. You come back the next day, mechanic proudly shows you the electric window working. You thank him, you get in the car, you turn it on, the car won't start. You're not going back to that mechanic. That mechanic's an idiot. And that's what happens when managers and customers see software developers change one thing over here and something over there breaks. Nothing strikes more fear into the heart of a customer or a manager than that one. Because all of a sudden, the managers and the customers who don't have any idea about the technology, they believe these guys have lost control. They begin to think that if they looked under the hood, they'd find crap. They're right. And they begin to suspect that maybe the quality of this product is not all that good at all. They become afraid of letting you make changes. Has anybody worked at a company where the management finally said, all right, nobody changes that module? Right? That module is too fragile. Every time you touch it, something else wrong. Nobody touches that module. That is the ultimate failure of a software developer. When the business, who is not technically competent, says you're not touching that module. <laughs> Third symptom of bad code. Your boss comes to you one day and says, you know that module you've got to write? Um, you know Joe over in the, that other group over there? He wrote one just like it last year. You should go talk to Joe and see if you can use some of his code. Now, uh, you know Joe, and you know the kind of code that Joe writes, and you don't want to go over there and talk to Joe. But your boss told you to do it, so you go over there and you look. And sure enough, Joe's module does just what you need it to do. But it does more than that. It couples to some bizarre framework. It uses some weird database. And the more you look at it, the more you realize that, yes, you could use Joe's code, but the problems you would be bringing in are so severe that you finally say, nah, it'd just be easier for me to write it myself. The desirable parts of the code are so horribly coupled to the undesirable parts of the code that you cannot use the desirable parts of the code somewhere else. Joe's code was crap. How do we deal with this? What is the common thread of all of those flaws? 
Well, okay, spaghetti is the word that we use to say, well, this code's all scrambled up. But there's a more technical term. Coupling. Coupling. The reason the code is rigid is because the modules depend on each other in undesirable ways. The reason that the, the code is fragile is because the code depends on data structures in undesirable ways. The reason that I cannot take the desirable parts of Joe's code and use them in my system is because Joe's code depends on other code in undesirable ways. And the common thread there is coupling, dependency.